The beauty of the oxidation number formalism and assigning oxidation numbers is that we can easily identify oxidation and reduction at particular atoms. We'll often look at specific carbons, especially by applying the oxidation number formalism to those atoms in the reactants and products of a reaction. And we'll do this often in looking at biochemical reactions and metabolic pathways to understand where oxidation and reduction have occurred within a biochemical chain or series of reactions. Oxidation, quite simply, involves an increase in the oxidation number of an atom. And this is an idea you've probably seen before in your introductory chemistry course as well. Take a look at this carbon here. What's happened to its oxidation number? Well, in the starting material, it's not connected to any metals or electronegative heteroatoms. It's only connected to carbon and hydrogen. So the oxidation number is pretty much zero here based on the formalism we've developed. If we then turn our attention to the carbon atom, that same carbon atom in the product, we see that it's now connected to one oxygen atom. So its oxidation number in the product is plus one. Its oxidation number has increased. Thus, oxidation has occurred. Reduction, naturally, involves a decrease in oxidation number at a particular atom. Take a look at the nucleophilic acyl substitution example that we've discussed so far. If we focus on the carbonyl carbon, the oxidation state of the carbonyl carbon here is plus three. And see if you can verify that on your own based on the number of bonds to electronegative heteroatoms at that carbon. After the reaction has occurred, let's look again at the carbonyl carbon. What's its oxidation number now? Well, we've lost the carbon chlorine bond and that's been replaced with a relatively nonpolar carbon hydrogen bond. The oxidation number has been reduced to plus two. In fact, this is why reduction is called reduction. The oxidation number of the atom is reduced. So the carbonyl carbon here is reduced from the plus three to the plus two oxidation state or oxidation number. And now that we have the oxidation number formalism, we can introduce the idea of an oxidation ladder, which is a hierarchy or an ordering, if you like, of compounds from most to least oxidized. And we can use oxidation ladders to organize reactions as well, distinguishing between oxidation and reduction processes, moving up or down the ladder, and what we'll call functional group interconversions or functional group interchanges or substitutions that involve a change in functional group type without a change in oxidation number. For example, converting a urea into a carbonate doesn't change the oxidation number of the carbonyl carbon. It just changes the type of heteroatom connected. So these horizontal transformations in an oxidation ladder are considered functional group interconversions or FGIs. Moving up or down the ladder corresponds to oxidation or reduction. So let's look at this in a little more detail on this oxidation ladder of alcohols and carbonyl compounds that we have here. At the bottom of the ladder, we have the most reduced compounds, and these are the alcohols. The oxidation state of this carbon, which is gonna be our focus throughout the ladder, is plus one. If we move up to the ketones and aldehydes, we've increased that oxidation number by one unit. So moving up the ladder here, corresponds to oxidation. Now we're at plus two for the aldehyde and plus two formally for the ketone. When we get up to the carboxylic acid derivatives, we've increased the oxidation number further. So again, focusing on the carbonyl carbon, the oxidation number now is plus three. We've increased the oxidation number by yet another unit. If you look at the acyl chloride, the acyl chloride formally anyway, has an oxidation number of plus three. But it tends to be put in a league of its own because chlorine is much more electronegative than, for example, nitrogen. And so this carbon is even more electron deficient than the one we see in an amide. One way to think about it, and I'll put this in quotes because it's not exactly kosher, but it works for me, is the acyl chloride is more like a plus 3.5. Of course, that doesn't fit to our system but it is definitely more electrophilic and more electron poor, this carbonyl carbon and an acyl chloride, than one we find in an amide or ester. Up here at the carbonic acid derivatives, the carbonyl carbon now has an oxidation number of plus four. So we're even more oxidized than the carboxylic acid derivatives up here. And kind of the, the very top of the ladder, 
the most oxidized carbon we find is the carbon of CO2, which again, formally has an oxidation number of plus four, but because it contains two carbon oxygen double bonds and no single bonds between carbon and oxygen or some other heteroatom bearing a lone pair, it's really the most electron deficient carbon that we commonly find among carbonyl carbons. Now that we've laid out the oxidation numbers, I hope it's easy to see that moving up this ladder corresponds to oxidation as the oxidation number of the carbonyl carbon increases and moving down the ladder corresponds to reduction as the oxidation number of the carbonyl carbon is ha, reduced. We'll learn reagents for accomplishing these various transformations in these videos and for many of the functional group interconversions in a later video series. But thinking about all of these in terms of an oxidation ladder will help organize your thoughts moving forward. So keep this in mind as we look at specific conditions. If you want to build a map of many of the reactions we'll see over the next several lessons, start with an oxidation ladder.